is up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into the politics and BS. Over the past several days, all of this stuff about Kamala Harris, is she black? Is she Indian? She never really claimed it before. Now she's claiming it. Don't get distracted by the BS, okay? So I want to start out by saying this, as I've been trying to do on all of these politics and BS episodes. If you are not registered to vote, please make sure you go and do it in your county. Make sure you know where your polling places are. If you are already registered to vote, don't just assume that they have not removed your name from the voter rolls because yes, they are purging voter rolls. So if you really want to vote, you may have to re-register, okay? Especially if you have not voted in some time. I think it's BS that they do it, but they do it. And that's one of the reasons why I tell people, and I've been talking about this before I even got more and more into speaking about the politics and BS, but when I have shared my thoughts on some things in the past and just talking about some trending stories that were going on in politics, I've said, you know, I vote. And I don't really know if it's made much of a difference, but the reason I did it, it didn't do it just because of my forefathers or ancestors and their push and drive to make sure and secure that myself today would have the right to vote. I didn't do it just for those reasons, but I do believe those reasons are important. But one of the reasons why I do it is because if it was not important, if it didn't make a difference, then why the hell do they go through so many measures? And I'm going to be honest about it. It is mainly the Republicans that do this stuff. It's not, you don't see Democratic um, people in these positions doing things like this. It's very undemocratic. It's very against democracy, but they are the ones that push to have the lines redrawn and redistricting and gerrymandering and removing people from voter registration rolls that have already registered. Well, this person hasn't voted in a long time. And they just assume that the people that haven't voted, they are Democrats. So they do these things like this. So if it wasn't that big of a deal, they would not be pushing so hard for people not to vote. Because the majority of the elections, especially the federal elections, not especially the federal elections, because they're the only one that have the electoral college, but the reason why they go through all of these measures is because when the federal elections do happen, even though a vast majority of people do not vote, we're saying, I I would say like 70% of the population of people do not vote. So it is always a small percentage of people that vote. It is usually the popular vote is for the people that they do not want to be in office. So the electoral college thing, it really should be abolished, but here we go. It still exists. So that's one of the reasons why I do vote because it's like, if it wasn't important, they wouldn't go so hard and heavy to stop people from voting. They go after people like people who go to college and and they fight against them voting. They want to make sure that the voter ID situation is so difficult where it would prevent mainly older African-American people from voting easily. They shut down a lot of polling places. They have made it illegal for some people to be able to hand out water at these polling places when people are standing in these long lines. They have made it difficult for people to vote. And and so that's one of the reasons why I do vote. So, you know, with all of those things being said, I wanted to talk about this because this focus that Donald Trump and his cronies have been trying to place on Kamala Harris's race Previous to that, it was on Joe Biden's age. Oh, he's too old. He doesn't know what he's doing. He is not even sure where he is right now. He's he's sleepy Joe. But not paying attention to Donald Trump falling asleep at his trials, 
falling asleep at the Republican National Convention when people were speaking, falling asleep at the wheel when he was in office in the first place and didn't know what the hell he was doing. The man should not even be able to visit the White House for a tour, okay? Let alone being in office again. But now that Joe Biden is no longer the Democratic nominee, now he wants to put the focus on her ethnicity. Well, is she black or is she Indian? You know, I I, I never knew her personally, but years ago she was Indian and now she's black. So which is it? Listen up, Donald Trump. It doesn't give it, it doesn't, we don't care. We don't care what she's claiming, but all you need to know is we are going to make sure that you will not be able to claim presidency ever again because Kamala Harris has never denied her ethnicity. And I have no issue with anyone who is biracial claiming every part of who they are because it is who they are. I've said this before about other people where it's like, They're actually not black, they're biracial. But if they want to claim more of one side or they identify more with one side than the other, then that's okay with me. But don't try to put it out here like Kabbalah Harris is Rachel Dolezal, who is someone who was never black, (laughs) was never African-American, actually has two Caucasian parents, and she was living a life as a woman who was black. And even still to this day, she says she identifies as black. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't even really care. If she wants to identify as being black and she was able to, you know, help out black people in that way because I believe she was working at some local NAACP office at the time, they fired her. I don't really know what the grounds were for firing her, if it was just because she was a fraud. (laughs) I I don't really know. But if she wasn't, you know, an undercover racist and she just said, I identify more with black people than with white people, then, hey, I guess that's her choice. But Kamala Harris has never lied about who she was. And for him to try to make this about race, He's really trying to make Kamala Harris into Rachel Dolezal for us to focus on things that really are not important. Kamala Harris is the right person. It's not about her gender. It's not about her ethnicity. She's the right person at the right time to crush the head of the serpent, (laughs) which is Donald Trump, all right? And I'm just over his antics and shenanigans of trying to put the focus on things that really are not important. He has nothing when it comes to policy. He has nothing when it comes to things that a president should be knowing about. He has no knowledge. He definitely has zero wisdom. And that's why even his own nephew and niece are out here saying that, yeah, we're voting for Kamala. And if Kamala wasn't a Democratic nominee and it was Jiminy Cricket, we'd be voting for Jiminy Cricket over Donald Trump. He has nothing. And that's why he continues to put the focus on her ethnicity. But I'm so glad that now, because you didn't really see a whole lot of this then with Democrats pushing back. And that's why it... it, it baffles my mind when it comes to these labels because (laughs) most people, when they think of, let's be clear, the Republican Party is no longer. The Republican Party has been confiscated by Donald Trump because the gag is Donald Trump was never a Republican. He was never a Republican. He's a fraud. He's a con. He even said years ago when someone asked him if he would ever run for president, he said, no, but you know, if that ever happened, I would have to, I would have to run as a Republican. And I don't remember the exact words that he used for why he would have to, but he pretty much was insinuating that the Republicans are stupid. So like, that's the only way I would be able to run for office. I would never be able to run as a Democrat. But his record shows that he, yeah, he might be a racist, but he also was a Democrat and he had donated to many Democratic Uh, runs for office, period. 
So the racist that came out of him used that as an opportunity to connect with the racist at heart in that party that gave them the drive and the push to come out of the closet, be free, and and show your true colors <laughs> and and be the racist that you are out loud and in public. And even some of them, they still aren't really doing it out loud and in public, but they're doing it in public places at his rallies because his rallies are just pretty much Klan rallies at this point in time where they allow a few sprinkles of some black people to show up as long as you're saying the right words and you're doing what Tim Scott does and says that this country is not a racist country. <laughs> okay. So the ironic thing that I was getting to was that the Republicans or the conservatives, the label, it was supposed to indicate people who are just so reserved and and they just are so against things that are wild and boisterous and violent and and all this other stuff they were trying to allude to what the Democrats are. But when it comes to them backing people like Donald Trump, who are all but things that the so-called conservative movement was supposed to stand for, they back him. And they will fight to the end to stand up for the wrong person to allow the ends to justify the means. But when Democrats have people in office that have done things wrong, they are the first ones to say, oh yeah, this person, they need to go ahead and step down. And they will push and push and push until that person does. But when it comes to the Republicans, they will stand for these people for the most part. They will stand for these people and go with them to the end. They will go with them to the end. So these people, the Democrats, they could have had like some sexual harassment allegation, not even like a charge, an allegation <laughs> from someone. And they'll say, oh, this person needs to go ahead and step down. You just need to go ahead and step down. Donald Trump could be a convicted felon. He could be convicted in civil court for the sexual claims that E. Jean Carroll placed against him and won twice in court, by the way. And and they will root for him to the end. Nothing to see here. He said he didn't do it. He said this. He said that. It's the hypocrisy for me. It's just absolutely blatant. It's disgusting. And so him trying to put the focus on her race is the tactics that he does all the time. He puts the focus on things that really are not important. And now he's the old man on the ticket. He can't talk about Joe Biden anymore, even though he still tries to bring his name up. Joe Biden, yes, he is still the president of the United States. And he was able to do recently what Donald Trump wasn't able to do. And that's to get those hostages released. They were not prisoners in Russia. They were hostages. He was able to get them released. Okay. One man had been over there as a hostage in Russia for either like four or six years. And when Brittany, Brittany Griner was swapped during Donald Trump's presidency, he was so against it. He was so against it. But he didn't get that man released that had been locked up for a while before Brittany Griner was. And now Joe Biden was able to secure it along with Kamala Harris. He can't take that away from them. And he's mad about it. Big mad. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts about all of it in the comments. Thanks for being here, liking, and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say bye.